Hi there, friends. How are you doing on this Friday? It is a rainy day here, but that doesn't mean we can't still have some fun diving into the design process further. I'm Becky Bunnell with Luca Haven Design, which is a purpose-driven interior design company in Grand Rapids and West Michigan. And we love to create spaces with intention, mission, and connection. And we have been taking this week to go through the big, scary design process and what that has in it. And we have looked through how to get that. And then yesterday we talked about how to create a home that serves you. And so we're getting these zones and those zones are important as we dive in today talking more about floor plans and how to create them. So we're going to dive into this design process. Uh, just excited because the kids are out of the house. Nana decided to take them on a fun field trip Friday excursion. I checked in with my mom just to make sure that maybe it wasn't raining there and it actually is sunny. So that's great. And another bonus is our youngest made it all the way there. And it was about uh, over an hour away and she gets car sick. We took a trip to Kentucky, which was about six hours away. And I think she threw up like five or seven times. We lost track. So I am excited to say that she made it and it is sunny and they are having a fun Friday field trip. And I know that you are here because you are looking for just as much excitement as we talk about flowing floor plan Friday. <laughs> Maybe that's a little too much, but what can I say? When you live with my husband, you end up with corny dad jokes all the time. I love them. So we're going to dive into floor plans today um, and talk about how you get them before you start making any kinds of selections. You know, a lot of people like to start diving right into those selections instead of taking that step back. What is our floor plan going to even look like? What do we actually need? What's our shopping list? for our space and how much room do we have for those objects as well. So we're going to take that step back. We're going to dive into how we develop a floor plan and then some tips and tricks uh, as you're going through our, or that checklist to remember. A lot of times people think that developing a floor plan takes a lot of tools, a uh, fancy software. And there are fancy softwares out there, right? There's SketchUp, there's Chief Architect. Um, to name a few. I also use Foyer to do some renderings. So there's all this fancy way to get floor plans, but trust me, you do not need them. As an eight-year-old, I was already making floor plans with very simple low-level tools. So you don't even need all these drafting tools, right, that they talk about. There's so many drafting tools out there, drafting boards. I will say when I was taking classes at uh, the New York Institute of Art and Design, they had us hand draft. We didn't even start with the fancy software tools. We started with hand drafting. So I have a very deep appreciation even more for hand drawing your floor plans. Not that I necessarily do that. Um, and I do use those tools instead. But I wanted to come today and show you that you do not need fancy tools, not even drafting tools to make your floor plan. All you need is simple graph paper. You need a pencil with an eraser, preferably. Your room. And that's about it. There's not much to creating a floor plan above that. So where do you get started? I know it can be a little intimidating, but honestly, you get started with just measuring the outside of your room. And we're going to go over how to make a floor plan today that isn't necessarily a remodel. It's just a freshening up of your current space. There is so much more. It's very different training if you're doing a remodel. But today we're just going to look at if you have an existing room, I'm going to use a bedroom as an example, and you want to freshen it up and you want to change out the furniture. 
this is where we're gonna start. So you measure the outside, uh, the outside circumference of your room and you grab your graph paper. You figure out how much each square of your graph paper is gonna be. So I have um, this fancy graph paper that um, I made for the company. Walls are where the doors are, where windows are. That's it. And you honestly just sketch on your paper the start of a floor plan, not drawn to scale. You're then gonna take that and make a scaled drawing on graph paper. So when I say scaled drawing, what I mean is that each box on your graph paper is worth a certain amount of inches. So you're gonna figure out how many inches that is used so that you can fit your room on one piece of graph paper. So there is a little bit math involved, I know it's a little scary, but trust me, you can do this. It's math that we learned in elementary school, and I, by all means, know that you can handle this. So you figure out how much, how many inches each box is worth so that you can fit your room on a piece of graph paper. So for my example, each box is worth four inches, so making three box equal one foot. And I sketched out my room to scale. So I had a three, 13 foot by six inches wall at the front, and then the side here is 18 feet and two inches. So I drew that to scale, and then you put in your doors. So when I'm talking about doors, scale, and where they're leading. So I have to the hallway and then also to the bath. It's really hard to point on a camera, by the way. And sorry for the lighting. I tried to add a light. I don't have the tools, but we're gonna get this training in anyway. So you add those doors, and then on the side here, I have three windows along the wall that you put in drawn to scale as well. So making sure that if it's, you know, one foot that you have three boxes lined out. And once you get the outside done, make sure you're adding in approximation, approximate locations of your plugs. So that's the two little, sorry, the two little lines in the circle represents a plug on the wall. You wanna make sure that you know where those are. So if you wanna plug in any lights or um, any electronics, you know where those plugs are in your space, and then any floor vents that you don't want to cover up or wall radiators depending on your heating system in your home. Make sure that you are also marking those as well. So this is your sketch of your room. This is the beginning of the floor plan. There's nothing fancy to it. It's a scaled drawing of the room that you're focusing on. There, something like that. <laughs> and from here, you're gonna do the same thing, but with furnishings. So you have your zones that you listed, right? The ones you want and the ones you need. Starting with the ones you need, what furniture do you need in those spaces to make those zones work for your family? So for this example, it's a bedroom. I need a bed first and foremost. That's something we need. Almost anything else for a bedroom is more of a want. I, you could argue, right, the end tables are also a need. So a bed and end tables are needs. So what I do is I will take the same graph paper, a different sheet of graph paper, and cut out the typical size of the bed you're looking for and the typical size of an end table. It doesn't have to match exactly what you're gonna select, just approximation at this point. And I cut those out of the onto my sketched room. And I'm moving them around, trying to figure out what's going to work. And then I also will do that for different zones that I want to have in our room. So for this example, I wanted a place for two chairs so that we can converse together. And then I wanted to add a fireplace to the room as well. So I know that in this specific instance, I have a gas line in 
a, a certain wall. So it had to be against that wall. So there's not as much to play with, but let's say you're doing a, take a picture when you have one, take a picture of it with your phone and then wipe it clean again. Move things around, create a different floor plan with those cutouts, take a picture and then do it again. Try to get at least three to five different ideas going for your floor plan. And then what you're gonna do is take those pictures and open up a simple PowerPoint if you want to and put those pictures all right next to each other. Now what you're gonna do is really focus on, okay, what do I feel works best for our family? What floor plan is it? Maybe it's a combination and you make another floor plan option. You're starting to move around this stuff and compare different floor plans before deciding which floor plan will work for you. And that's how you start making a floor plan. Like I said, you don't need fancy tools. You don't, you just need graph paper, a uh, tape measure and a pencil, honestly. Um, and you just start moving and scissors. You got to cut out the furniture, but then you start moving things around taking pictures and comparing floor plans before you select yours. So a couple quick tips, uh, further tips on floor plans that you might want to pay attention to. For instance, you want to make sure that the flow of people through the space works. You don't want to make it too cramped and feel more claustrophobic because you want to add all this furniture. So some good rules of thumb are make sure that around the doorways you have at least three feet. So shade in around where doorways open. The typical size of a door, if you have a swing door, sorry, is um, already about three feet. It's like two feet, eight inches or so. Right there. Another thing to note um, is that any, any walkway, really, so if you have a flow of people going from, let's say, an entryway through the living room to the kitchen, you want to make sure that there's about three feet for the walkway all the way through that path. That way people don't feel cramped and they can easily move through the through the room. Um, and then if you have objects like a chair and a couch, for instance, and you wanna get in between there, you can lessen that to two feet. And so, and then when it comes to a coffee table in between and a couch or any kind of table and a sitting area, you're gonna want about one to one and a half feet. So three feet for main walkways, two feet in between objects, and then the closer intimate areas like a coffee table to a couch, you're going down to one foot, one and a half feet. And those are just some things to keep in mind as you're doing this. You don't wanna butt objects right against each other and then no one can get anywhere in your room. Um, other tips, um, make sure to get those traffic flows that you're doing your empathy exercises. That way you know how you're moving throughout the space. Um, like I said, remember where plugs and vents are. That's very important. You're not gonna wanna cover up any vents. And then if you want to add a lamp, you're gonna need a plug nearby. So really think of where cords are going. And then um, check back with your nice to haves and your wants and needs. How many can you get into there? to not make it feel so cluttered. Take those into consideration. And then the biggest thing when you're evaluating different floor plans is check the balance. And what do I mean by that? So uh, for example, I have a finished floor plan here where it lists out each of my different furniture and then lighting. It's really hard to get this all in. Um, so. What I mean by balance is you're gonna cut your room into quadrants, so into fourths, right? You're gonna cut it this way and that way and you're gonna check to see that it is all balanced. So that there's symmetry involved. You can see I have two chairs on either side of the symmetry line. And then when you're looking at the hole, right? I have the bed balancing with the, the fireplace on that wall to see if there's balance in the room. And balance doesn't necessarily mean complete symmetry, like complete, like there's a, this specific chair on this side and the same one on that side. 
you can balance it differently. Just make sure that with your eye, the weight of objects feels the same. For example, on this one, when I look at the vertical symmetry, so you're looking at the walls now, this wall, symmetry up the wall. I have windows all along here. It would look very unbalanced if I did not have anything along this wall because I have something on the opposite side wall. So what I did in this instance, right, there's a door that helps create balance and then I have a large piece of art on this wall. So now when you're looking at the walls from one side to the other side, it's balanced. There's windows along the wall and then on the other side there's a door and a large picture. So it's not necessarily the same, right? I don't have windows on both walls, but I did create that balance with art in a doorway. So really check back and that's one of the checks and balances for your floor plan is to say, is this, does this feel balanced or not when you're comparing your different floor plans? And once you select your final floor plan, that's when you start listing out, okay, what is that furniture in that specific floor plan? So for this one, right, I listed out there's a bed, there's end tables, there's two chairs, um, there's the, the fireplace, and there's like a beverage cart to help balance out that wall. And then you're going to go in with your second layer, which is your lighting. Is there a chandelier? Are there lamps? Making sure that the light is spread out throughout the space as well. Um, and that is about it. Now you have your shopping list, if you will, before you do your selections. And if you were to dive into selections before this, you would probably get too much stuff and try to crowd it in your room or your room wouldn't serve you well because you don't have the necessary tools or furniture you need for the specific zones that you wanted to create. Maybe you didn't have the light that you wanted for the reading corner or um, you get too much art. That's another big one. You go to Hobby Lobby and you get a bunch of art and then you have nowhere to put it. So first, please figure out your floor plan. How much do you need? And so tomorrow what we're going to get into then is how do you even start that selection? How do you start what I call the prototype phase? So it's where we're getting samples and selecting things now. And we're also prototyping some of those areas that we have questions over before we're buying anything. And this is a phase that not a lot of designers have, but I am so excited to kind of open your eyes to what it can be, taking things I learned, like I said, from my engineering background and prototyping products and we're going to prototype some of those areas in your room that you're maybe just unsure about before you start making selections. So join me tomorrow as we as we dive into to the selection side of things. And as your action step today, take the room that you decided for this design process and sketch out that floor plan. Move cut out furniture pieces, move them around and decide on what floor plan works the best. For you making sure to do those checks and balances of a balanced room of walkways as well and going back to your empathy exercises back to uh, making sure that you have those spaces to serve you as well into your room and uh, as always please share this video comment uh, light into the design process because I know it can be scary and we will We'll be back here tomorrow to talk about selections and the prototype phase. I hope you guys all have a fantastic Friday. Another alliteration, sorry. <laughs> and uh, that you'll join me tomorrow, 1 o'clock. See you there. Have a great Friday.